Hello and welcome to Physics with Amul sir. This video is for class 12th and we are going to continue with the chapter of current electricity. Previously, we spoke about the concept of temperature coefficient of resistivity. Okay, uh, we also saw the concept of power and we saw some formulae for power. Today, we are going to see the concept of EMF, electromotive force. Okay, so let's begin. Now, make a note that the concept of resistors in series and resistors in parallel that has been deleted from the syllabus. Okay, so you will see that in the notes that I have already shared with you. In the notes, these concepts will be there because they were there in the uh, previous year. Uh, so this year, CBC has removed these uh, two topics that is uh, derivation for resistors connected in series and resistors connected in parallel. Okay, so that is not in our syllabus. Please uh, ensure that you are not writing them in your classwork. Definitely you can read them okay, to uh, develop your understanding but they will not be part of syllabus. We will directly jump to the concept of EMF. So, what is EMF? EMF stands for Electromotive Force. Let us see first the definition. We define Electromotive Force as the work done to send a unit positive charge once around the complete circuit. Okay, that is the definition. What is the meaning? EMF is also called as the open circuit voltage but of course now you will ask what is the meaning of all this okay so let us see now on your screen you will be seeing a you will be seeing an electrolytic cell i am sure you know what electrolytic cell is you have studied that in chemistry so here we have an electrolytic cell that contains some kind of electrolytic solution and there are two electrodes p and n p stands for the positive electrode n stands for the negative electrode so right now you will see that there is a resistor that is connected between P and N. If we remove that resistor, right? If that resistor is removed, then the potential difference that now you will get between the electrodes P and N, that potential difference is known as EMF, electromotive force. The name is misleading. Okay, uh, you will re read the name EMF, that is force, uh, electromotive force. And it sounds like it is some kind of force, but actually it is not a force, it is actually a potential difference. Right? So what EMF gives? EMF will give you how much work will be done in sending a charge from P to N in this case. Right? So that is called as EMF. Uh, EMF we donate by, denote by the symbol epsilon. Right? And the SI unit for EMF will be volt. Right? So make a note of this. So if that was a little confusing, don't worry, we will make sense of this. So this was the electrolytic cell that you saw, right? So we had these two electrodes P and N and we have connected a resistor R. Okay, so we want to now find out a formula for the EMF, the electromotive force. So we will see the formula. Let V be the potential difference uh, across R. Okay, now why this potential difference has come? That has come because of the electrolytic cell, right? Because there is an electrolytic cell, due to that electrolytic cell, there is a potential difference V across R. So we can write this potential difference V equal to epsilon and epsilon is nothing but EMF, EMF of the electrolytic cell minus I R. I is the current that is flowing through the circuit and also through the electrolyte, remember and R, this small r, this is called as internal resistance of the cell. So our electrolytic cell, it has some resistance, okay. The solution that is there inside, that provides some resistance and that resistance we call as internal resistance. So what is the formula? V is equal to epsilon minus IR. Epsilon is EMF or you can write it as epsilon is equal to V plus I R. Okay, so this will give you a formula for EMF. So what should we understand from this? EMF we are measuring for, for the electrolytic cell. Okay, so whichever cell you are using. Uh, maybe we are using a small 1.5 volt battery. Okay, or we are using some kind of large uh, inverter. Okay, the battery of our inverter. Okay, that is basically the cell. EMF we measure for that electrolytic cell. Right? And V, that is potential difference, that is the potential difference that is arising across the electro ends of the conductor. So what we are getting? We are getting V is equal to epsilon minus IR. 
so basically if you are getting your potential difference of 1.5 volt we should understand that the uh, it is actually less than the emf of the cell okay emf of the cell will always be little bit higher than the potential difference by how, what factor the factor is ir okay so if you add the factor of ir to the potential difference we will be getting the emf of the cell now in most cases what happens this quantity is small r that is the internal resistance internal resistance is very very small so internal resistance is very small therefore what happens normally we can neglect this term of ir and we generally get the emf is equal to the potential difference so for day to day scenario uh, what we get is we get our potential difference and emf is basically the same so we don't bother whenever we are solving any kind of numericals or we are making some kind of uh, circuit we don't bother with what must be the emf or what must be the voltage because as i said normally the internal resistance is very very small but although it is small uh, it is not uh, zero and it is not negligible we can measure that internal resistance as well and therefore we see there is a slight difference between potential difference and emf now let us find a relation between emf and current so what we saw v saw v is equal to epsilon minus ir but ohm's law tells us that v is equal to ir where this r is the resistance the outer external resistance that you are attached so v is equal to ir and v is equal to epsilon minus ir where that r is the internal resistance of the cell so comparing these we can write ir is equal to epsilon minus i smaller so these we can write capital i is equal to epsilon upon capital r plus small r so what will be the maximum value of current you will get the maximum value of current when this capital r is zero so if capital r equals zero you get a maximum current that is i max and then i max will be equal to epsilon upon small r right that is the relation we get so for a for a given circuit the maximum current that you can draw is given by epsilon upon internal resistance emf upon the internal resistance but in general cases we never have such high current okay because that can actually damage the cell so the current that we keep for our uh, circuits it is generally much less as compared to the value of i max okay but this is how much current can actually be drawn from a given cell now we will see one derivation the derivation we are going to see is to find out the equivalent emf when cells are connected in series so just like we did for capacitors we connected capacitors in series and found out the total capacitance then we connected them in parallel and found out the total capacitance same thing we will be doing for emf that is cells so now first we will see for cells when they are connected in series so we have got two cells e1 and e2 these are their emfs okay so cells e1 e2 they are connected in series uh, how we have connected the negative of one cell is connected to the positive of the other so on and so forth so we can do this for n number of cells for now let us do it for two cells so we have connected these two cells in series okay so we have to find out their total that is equivalent emf the entire answer we will find in the notes that are given here we will see only the steps okay so how do we do it now so we have seen there are uh, three points a b and c e1 is connected between a and b e2 is connected between b and c let v1 be the potential difference between a and b right so we can write v1 is equal to e1 minus i r1 where r1 is the internal resistance of the first cell i am sure you remember this formula Uh, from the uh, what you have seen just now okay so v is will be equal, v1 will be e1 minus ir1 similarly you can write v2 that is potential difference between b and c so v2 we can write as e2 minus ir2 okay then what will be the total potential difference between a and c that will be equal to that uh, let us call it as v so v will be equal to v1 plus v2 then you can substitute for v1 and v2 and you will get e1 minus ir1 plus e2 minus ir2 or we can write it as e1 plus e2 minus 
I into R1 plus I. So this part gives the total equivalent EMF and this part gives the total equivalent internal resistance. So what we can write it as? We can write it as E equivalent that is the equivalent EMF of these two cells which are connected in series that we can write as E1 plus E2 and the equivalent internal resistance R equivalent you can write as R1 plus R2 and as we said this can be done for n number of cells so that is how you will find the equivalent EMF but now you will ask a question what if we have flipped the cell right so here what we did we connected negative of one side to the positive of the other what if we connect it like this in this manner what we have done we connected the negative of one cell to the negative of the other cell okay if we do it like this the equivalent EMF will become E1 minus E2 why? because now in this case the potential difference between that is V2 between B and C that will become minus E2 minus IR2 okay that is the only change you have to remember so equivalent EMF will be E1 minus E2 if the other cell, cell is flipped that is you have connected negative also to negative and R equivalent will remain the same that is it will still be R1 plus R2 if you want you can figure it out ok so the uh, equivalent internal resistance that formula will still be the same but for EMF it will become E1 minus E2 if the situation is this ok that is how you will be able to find equivalent EMF when cells are connected in series so with that we will stop for today I hope the concept wasn't too confusing. The word seems uh, we have heard it for the first time that is EMF. Okay, and again don't get confused. It is called EMF, electromotive force, because uh, initially it was thought to be a force which is driving the electrons, which is causing the electric current to flow. But now we have real, uh, realized there is no force as such. It is simply a potential difference. Okay, so that is why. But the name has stuck due to uh, historic reasons. Okay, we still call it as. EMF but it is a potential and the SI unit for EMF is volts ok uh, in the next class we will be seeing EMF uh, equivalent EMF when cells are connected in parallel ok till then make sure that all these answers you have written from the notebook all these are available in the notes that I have already given to you ok in detail all the steps are there follow them if there are still any doubts make sure you are asking thank you